Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you with another weekly schlag here at Highland Cycles in Montrose, Colorado. If you're new here, this is our shop vlog we do every week where we show you all the cool dirt bike stuff we work on and tips and tricks and tools and all that good stuff. Uh, if, like I said, if you're new, make sure you stick with us for this whole video. See if it's worth a subscription. If it is, hit that subscribe. Give us a like. That would be super rad. That really helps us out a lot. And we have a ton of work. So <laughs> there's going to be lots to learn uh, from now and forward and all that good stuff. So if that sounds fun, here we go. All right, so first on the lift is this 350 XCF. Uh, I've already been working on it. I didn't show you guys all of it. I put a tail light on it. Uh, put a high output stator from Trail Tech on it. And that's about that so far. But now we're gonna do some forks. Uh, we've got some of the really, really, really good KTM twin chambers that have the uh, nitrogen bladder in them. I really like these forks. They're basically a copy of the SSS before all the new copies of the SSS came out. So um, I think I've shown them before, but we'll go ahead and show them in this video, at least what's inside there. Also, again, show our cool new tool. I really, really like this thing. Um, this is for protecting this. This is gonna show it perfectly, exactly why I uh, developed this thing. So, uh, and they are for sale now. Uh, I will have them on the website by the time this video drops. Uh, they'll be on there, you guys can buy them, we'll ship them to you. I think they're pretty cool. Um, big thanks to Moto Minded for prototyping and getting me dialed in because they have a 3D printer. I don't. I had the idea, they had the know-how, and it worked out awesome. So anyway, let's take these forks apart and show you how that thing works and show you what's inside these. Hey guys, real fast, let me just jump in here and remind you to please use the Rocky Mountain ATV link in the description below to buy anything you need from Rocky Mountain. It really, really helps us out and it doesn't cost you any more money than normal. And Rocky Mountain ATV, honestly, is one rad company. I'm learning more and more how awesome they are. So again, please check that link out. Use that if you can. It makes a big difference and I appreciate it. All right, here's where the tool comes in. Put that on there to protect that clicker. And then we just Flip it upside down. We can rest it right on there. So, won't hurt the clicker, won't hurt the top of the cap. All right, now is when that little tool is really super important because we got to push really hard down on here, get it on there. Now, to do that without damaging it, you got to have something down there you do it on your boot or whatever, but that thing totally protects it. It's really, really cool. And there we go. Totally protected, super simple, I love it. These things are uh, 10 bucks and I think it's worth every penny, super cool. All right guys, so these are pretty cool. These cartridges, they have these big flat spots you can see, so you can hold them there. You still don't wanna crush them, so you gotta be easy there. And I'm still gonna use the big cap here, but that makes that so much nicer than just being around. You can just kind of snug that down and it's way, way better. Still don't know why they don't make these forks anymore. So there it is, guys. That's the difference between these and every other SSS copy. Uh, this is the spring that holds it. It's just a weird um, thing. It's not, it's not really a spring. Per, it's not this, it doesn't work exactly the same. It doesn't move just like the other one. Like the other one allows it to move and then, um, you know, the compression, the, anyway, it's the base valve, the compression base valves up here. So this does have a valve up here and it is the compression side. It's just a little bit different. Um, and I don't really know why they did this and it was kind of a pain. This is probably what killed this for because people didn't like this. Well, they didn't like having to fill it. They didn't like having to charge it, all that stuff. So uh, other than that though, this fork is amazing. 
show you a little trick, guys. You don't want this to be um, deflated like this. Uh, you don't have to get the nitrogen in there right away, but you can kind of peel that back and suppose that that keeps it nice and like full. It's not up to like seven psi or what's supposed to be in there, but it's full enough now to hold its shape. All right, now I'm going to change the fork seals, which I've showed you a thousand times. And I'm not going to show you again. When we get that done, I'll show you how to put it back together. Oh, yeah, it says like the price is like 28 or something. But they don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I hate. Yeah. I hate the whole tire thing like that because it doesn't make any sense, you know, like. Whatever. But. And it felt like super hard. It feels stiff right now. I know. And I don't know. Has he. I, I forgot to ask him. I was going to ask him if he's ever run that tire because it could be just the tire because those are big knobs. And if you're pushing, those knobs will flex a bunch. You know, it's not necessarily the moose. It could be just the knobs, but we'll see what we can do. I'm not too worried about it. He didn't, he didn't seem too worried about it. <laughs> all right, got those. <coughs> we got those forks all done and uh, ready to go. The bike's ready to rock and roll. Getting ready to add some moose balls to these wheels. And you guys are wondering about the tusk stand. Let me show you. So rear wheel off. Bike pretty freaking sturdy. Um, really happy. Now these are obviously cranked down nice and tight. Otherwise it would want to lean forward. Um, but I'm super happy with how that's working. We can move it out of the way. We can do whatever. Uh, I'm using the lock on it. I think that's important. Uh, a lot of people have talked about how the bottle jack, uh, you know, leaks and things like that. And I'm sure it does. And it's a relatively inexpensive jack. I mean, as far as like <clears throat> the quality, I'm sure is not, you know, the best, but it's, you know, it works. And when you take the weight off of it, it doesn't stress it. Uh, the other thing that people have talked about and I agree with is the floppiness of the pedal. It is kind of weird how it does that. Uh, so I'm going to work on that. Uh, see if I can't figure out a way to make that not as floppy. But it works just fine. And like I said, you take that, take the weight off of it. Super impressed so far, guys. I like it a lot. Um, like I said, I could move it around. I can put it wherever I want. It's going to be cool. So um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll just keep beating on it and see if it holds up. <laughs> all right guys next job on the lift and it is a lift it's the tusk scissor lift uh because we're going to be taking front and rear end off of this bike we are doing some tbt love to this 2018 300 xcw i'm super excited because that's what my other bike is and i think it works so freaking well so i'm excited to bring that to this guy um because man that bike is good especially in the rough stuff. Um, I'm excited to yank this suspension off and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. I probably won't go super in depth because I gotta get it done. <laughs> and filming slows things down as you can imagine. I'll show you what our valve sacks look like and all that good stuff and anything interesting I find, I'll bring you guys in. So. All right guys, we got the forks all apart. We got the shock apart uh, and we are getting ready to do our thing here. Um, now on the Explore setup, one of our favorite setups, is to just add um, adjustable base valves, valve those correctly, uh, and then valve the mid valve on the rebound side, and then we leave the high speed side alone, the compression side, uh, the normal compression side alone. So uh, when we're done, you'll end up with low speed compression adjustment on both forks, rebound adjustment on one fork, and then uh, high speed compression adjustment on the left fork. So um, it's a relatively affordable way to do it. It's about Twelve to thirteen hundred dollars, including springs, bushing seals, oil, and a bladder kit. So um, I think it's a pretty good deal, really, for what you're getting. You're getting a really good setup uh, for another like two, I think it's another two hundred dollars. We can set them both up as open chambers, so we add a mid valve to the compression side and change it to rebound on top, compression on the bottom on both forks, and that works really good. But the difference between that and the way the normal way we set up is pretty minimal, and I feel like. 
Um, nine out of ten people are really, really happy with the way we set it up. That's how mine is on my 300, um, and I love it. It works good for going fast. It works good for the rocks. Um, now, if you're probably, you know, a more upper level A guy or you know double A guy, you're gonna want um, more control. So you'd probably do the mid valve on both sides. So um, here's how. Here's what these look like. The stock ones, stock base valves, no adjustment, no bypass, no nothing, just super stock. So we're gonna take these apart, gonna throw these things away, <laughs> uh, take the pistons and everything, and we're gonna put them onto these adjustable base valves. Um, I don't know why KTM, anyway, saving money, I guess. Uh, and then um, valve them, and then we're gonna start putting things back together. All, uh... <laughs> all right, guys, we got a super different uh, base valve setup. So there's two of the new ones here because they have two to build. So obviously, whatever. So this is the stock valving up here, and then here is our um, our new valving. Quite a few more shims, quite a bit more control. Definitely gonna be slowing this thing down uh, because part of it is now we have an adjuster right so we can like bleed some off if we want to move, make it move fast that's one nice thing you can stiffen up the uh, damping because now you have the ability to bypass it <clears throat> so that's cool uh, the other thing is one of the problems with these bikes is that they just fall through the stroke horribly uh, when you like drop a ledge or hit some whoops and things like that they just bottom out they're okay when you're going you know, relatively slow through rocks and choppy stuff like stock. They're all right they're like that. They're not terrible. Uh, but if you start going uh, fast at all, they just go through the stroke. So that's going to be awesome. Really excited about that. And I'm going to go ahead and build these two things, get these things done uh, so that, uh, um, yeah, I can get that done. And then I'll show you what we're doing to the mid valve. All right, guys, there we go. There's the mid speed valve. Um, this is the old, this is the new, um, but lots of differences, lots of things, uh, but yeah, pretty cool. We'll get this built up and then we'll be done with the fork valving. We've got to put it all back together, seals and bushings and all that good stuff. And then we'll move on to the shock. So I love doing this stuff, guys. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's super fun uh, work. I actually really enjoy it. And then also I love showing you guys. And then I really, really, really like the feedback we get when people get their bikes back and they're so stoked. So build this thing back up, put these forks back together. And the next thing you're gonna see is me taking the shock apart. All right, guys, got the shock apart. Boom, here we go. Stock valving, new valving. And yeah, those are all piled up because they're all the same size. And this goes in there. Uh, pretty different setup. Uh, quite a bit more hold up on this one with the face shims. Um, <clears throat> a lot more of them. Also uh, thinner or smaller diameter on the rest of the stack. So it's gonna be, it basically, this thing's going to work a lot better. It's going to hold up a little bit better, but then it's going to flex nice and uh, well to let it move through the travel uh, in a supple manner. So pretty cool. Let's get that thing back together. Uh, also, guys, we are revalving the compression adjuster, too. I forgot to mention that. Not a huge difference there, but definitely one of the biggest differences is this uh, starting shim. Uh, and we got an extra shim in here. So... It's not a massive difference on that, but it is different. We do everything, every little part. We change it up, make it better. All right, next on the lift is the YZ450F. This is one of the good ones, guys. I think this might be an 09, 08, one of the last of this style motor um, with the normal style motor. The new ones are great too. Obviously, they're really, really good, but it took them quite a few years of testing, tuning, adjusting, getting real riders on it to help sort that thing out. because. It wasn't the best, let's be honest, <laughs> at first. The 2010, 11, 12s were, uh, the motor was great, but they handled like a boat. So um, this is one of the good ones, guys. I really like these, they're really good. So um, we are doing a water pump, and I don't know if I've ever shown a full water pump rebuild on the channel. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I took everything off, got the water pump uh, cover off, impeller off, Got everything loose out of the way because what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole inner clutch cover off because if you're going to do it right, that's what you got to do. So I'm going to pull that off, then we'll head over to the bench and replace the parts. All right, guys, so first thing we're going to yank our impeller shaft out. We have a new one. 
you guys can see that even though this is steel it's on um, seals it gets grooved it's crazy uh, those the rubber grooves the steel so got a new one of those and we got all new seals bearing everything so um, I'm gonna start with Boy, that thing is gnarly. It got kind of jacked up. So we're going to knock that out of the way first. Actually, just pop it out, pull it out. Yeah, that's nasty. All right, guys, we got it all. Uh, out seals out on both sides bearing out <clears throat> it's pretty gross so I'm gonna take this whole rig and put it into the ultrasonic let that thing run I'm gonna probably put this in there too let it get it all nice and cleaned up and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how we reinstall it all right guys we got the cases all cleaned up got brand new parts all ready to go so um, it's really no like not too hard um, this is the water pump seal and it goes in backwards of what you think uh, now it looks like you know you normally you'd want this to go like that but that's not the case because the the seal is made to hold stuff from going like in towards it this way so you put it in backwards of how you would normally think and like that you, wanna, you can do if you can do it by hand do it by hand and now i'm going to finish it off with like a socket we'll make sure it goes nice and tight down in there Still though, I'm just gonna push. There we go. And it helps to get a socket that's like a little bit bigger than the seal so it stops on the case. Now we go seal first, same thing. Gonna push it in what looks like backwards. And this one is keeping the oil out of the water. The other one's keeping the water out of the oil. Then we got our bearing, which is unidirectional, doesn't matter. Actually, take our new shaft, put a little bit of grease on it so as it slides through, it doesn't damage any seals. There we go. I like to install this like this without the, the impeller on because I like to use a gun to brip, just blip the impeller on. So hold it like this we're gonna slide it on and see how this is d-shaped there or excuse me how it's got the flat spots on the side gonna match that up with over here on the case there we go and that keys in you can grab it and feel that it won't turn so that's perfect now guys we're just gonna put all the bolts in the outside bolts all back together nothing really new to see here but there you go water pump all rebuilt ready to go this thing should be perfect now um, now I gotta swap springs on this which on these bikes totally sucks because <laughs> you got to take the exhaust off well i'm going to loosen the exhaust because actually i've been just dealing with that uh, an exhaust leak but so i'm loosen that and then we're going to flip the subframe up out of the way and pull the shock off swap springs and put it all back on so anyway see you guys on the next job here hey guys so it's late night on wednesday night um and i've got my kids 125 in pieces here um it's a really, really long story, and maybe if you guys are interested, I can tell the whole thing uh, here on YouTube. But I just want to show you something nuts. So he locked it up uh, out at the Grand Junction day where we were all riding. He had a great ride, lots of time on the bike, everything uh, been great. Uh, and then he was climbing a big hill, just pinned uh, <laughs> up a big hill, and it, went, gah, 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 and it locked up. He was like, oh no, he's super worried. Uh, we had had a problem with the cases. Um, where the drain bolt had been someone before us had used uh, a time cert and You know in and out in and out in and out anyway, it ended up breaking the case and I Jerry rigged it got through and I was gonna get it welded later Just gonna get him through this race and all the stuff uh, But then it blew up. I thought oh crap. It's the motor or the transmission. It wasn't that fix actually worked really well So I thought oh, it's the crank. I mean, we've had problems with this bike in the past um Again, it's a really long story. Not the case. I took it apart, and look at that. 
that was all beat all over the piston. I'm like, good night, what the heck is that? I couldn't figure it out. So I looked at the head, all stuff all over the head. I'm like, what the heck? So I'm looking and looking and looking. And then I take a closer look at the spark plug. And I don't know if you guys, there you go. The porcelain broke. See, there's still a gap. It didn't actually hit the, <laughs> the electrode. The porcelain broke, came out, and freaking exploded all over this motor. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> hey, it's nuts. Um, so I have a whole bunch of parts. Um, I already got a full engine kit, crank and everything. I got a new cylinder um, here just in case. Uh, that was messed up. I got everything ready to go to build a brand new bike for the kid. And it turns out everything's actually okay. Um, now I am still going to split the cases, put a new crank in it, a new main bearings, um, because why not? I'm also going to get the cases fixed. I'll show you what we had happen. So that right there is what happened. This was normally a boss uh, and I ended up gluing it on there with Yama Bond. And anyway, it got through the day, but it's no good. So I'm going to clean that up really good. I'm going to get this case half to my buddy to weld it, and drill and tap a new hole. So that'll be all fresh and new. And like I said, we're going to put a brand new crank in it because it's a part and I'm not going to not do it. Um, but I can't believe it. Like that is the first time I've seen that. Guys, let me know in the comments below if you've seen something like that happen. I have never seen that happen. I've seen spark plugs come apart and have um, uh, issues, but not like that. Like I've never seen the porcelain just break away. So that's crazy. Super happy. It wasn't the crank. I was kind of losing a little bit of um, faith in Hot Rod's cranks because that's what was in it. Turns out the crank feels really good. Like I said, it feels good. I'm going to keep it as a spare just in case. Um, because it feels great. I'm going to measure everything, make sure it's good, but it feels amazing. So, yeah, we're going to split the cases, get this thing back together, get this kid racing in, in a week and a half. So, he unfortunately won't be riding this week uh, for Thursday Night Ride or this weekend, probably. Um, but, yeah, I'm blown away. I can't believe it's okay. So, yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. All right, guys, next on the lift is a 23 300XC. Um, this one has been causing this gentleman problems, unlike mine, <laughs> uh, but it is a problem I've now heard uh, quite a few times from a few people. Uh, it seems like it runs pretty fine till it gets down around a half a tank. I don't think that matters, but it's a certain amount of time <laughs> and it gets, um, it, it basically bogs out and dies. And then you wait for a little while and a run for a little while. And anyway, I have a guess. Maybe you guys have a guess. Comment below with your guess and stick around. We'll see if we uh, find out what it is in this slog. Hopefully we do and we don't have to go into next week. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's take this thing apart and take a look. Funny. <laughs> Highland Cycles is Morgan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you can... I So I don't worry about it much, uh, honestly, but... Uh, what I also do, though, is I take the rim strip and move it to where that's not just open. You know, so you just you just move the rim strip a little bit to where that's not open. Uh, some guys tape them and, you know, be really careful. The thing about the, the lube that is in with those moose balls and any lube that you buy specifically for foam is it's going to be silicon based and it's not going to go away when it gets water on it. Um, that's the big concern, right? Like you're, the concern is washing the lube away. Uh, and that's why I use the real stuff. Uh, I used to use Murphy's tire soap, which actually works really good as a lube until you get it wet and then it washes out cause it's soap. <laughs> and, so, and so it goes away and out here in the West, we don't have too much of that problem. You know, it's pretty dry most of the time. Um, but you know, if you're crossing rivers or things like that, it's a thing. Um, so I use the good stuff and I don't worry too much about it. Like I said, some guys will sit there and tape things and do all, but like you said, it goes through the spoke nipples anyway. So it kind of doesn't matter. Um, but the, the, honestly, probably the only real concern would be like dirt and dust because that can, 
wear a moose faster, right? Like it can, um, you know, just the friction, right? So, I mean, but if you think about it, like how much is really going to get in there if they're nice and tight packed, you know, like it's probably not going to get a whole bunch of dirt in there. <laughs> but uh, um, so, yeah, it, I would definitely turn the rim strip to where it covers it for sure. Um, just to keep the dirt and stuff out. Um, but past that, I don't worry about it. Other folks, like if you, if it's like just bothering you, then take some Gorilla Tape and just put it over there. Yeah, clean it really well, obviously first. Um, put some Gorilla Tape over it and just go to town. Awesome, man. Well, you'll be stoked. It's, they're awesome. Cool, have a great day. All right, guys, so it looks like hopefully I'm correct. So. I mentioned that we'd had some failures of the uh, fuel filter. You see how dark that is? Um, I'm gonna pull it off and see if I can blow through it slash suck through it, uh, see if it's flowing. I don't think it is. Um, I've had quite a few guys have this problem where it runs for a while and then it stops like it's running out of gas. <clears throat> because this is like a bag spongy thing where it fills up and it runs for a while, but eventually it's not flowing fuel quick enough through it so then it'll brr, you know suck it up and 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 not run i don't think slash hope not uh that it's a pump but i have a way to pressure test it so i have one of these filters i'm going to replace that thing uh and then we're going to see if the the pressure stays good it should uh the thing is i'm probably gonna need to like go ride it uh for a while to make sure it's all good but um hopefully i'll be able to tell a lot between the two filters so give me one second That is not flowing well at all. And it looks even worse. Like you can see, I got lots of gas in my mouth. That's awesome. <clears throat> you can see the really dark patches. Obviously, this is brand new and dry, so it's gonna look different no matter what. But it blows through with no issue. And I think it'll do that even after it's got gas on it. So. Um, this is an OEM part, comes with a new O-ring. If you guys get these, make sure you either take this O-ring off or take the O-ring out of there, out of the pump, um, so you don't end up with two. Take our Takomoto fuel pressure gauge. And before someone jumps in, it's like, it's not super duper accurate. You're right, it's not crazy accurate, but what it is, is a way to look and see if there's anything uh, changing with throttle, like you can see that, so. So what I'm looking for is something above 40. Oh, there we go. I want to see something above 40, close to 50. Again, I know it's not that accurate, but when I rev it, I don't want it to move much. And it's not. All right, guys, I feel pretty darn good about that. Um, put this thing all back together. He's got a cool little uh, filter in there. I might buy one of those things, like removable. I don't know where that came from. That's awesome. I might get one of those things just to help protect my injectors. Uh, <clears throat> Cause the little, oh, the little ones that come with them are kind of eh. They're, they're little and they get clogged up. And if you're on the trail, you just like take it out and throw it away. Then you forget to put it in. Don't ask how I know. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, um, I think that's pretty cool. Might get one of those. But I think we got this thing fixed guys. Uh, this has happened to a lot of folks. So um, I'm gonna give him a ring and see if what he wants me to do, I don't really have time to just go ride it, unfortunately. But I think um, with as clogged up as that filter was, and I'm going to let it dry and see if it changes at all when it's dry. Um, like if it gets way easier to go through, then I'll be, eh, maybe it's just the way it is. But I don't think so. I think it's clogged up. So there we go. 
That's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Zach is only here for like another week. So you guys make sure you comment below what we should do to Zach before he leaves. Uh, what I should do to his motorcycle while he's gone. Um, <laughs> and all those good things. Uh, he, if you guys don't know, he's joining the National Guard. He's got a whole bunch of training coming up. So he's going to be gone for a while. And we're really happy for him, honestly. It's pretty awesome. He's going to serve the country. But do not, please don't thank him for his service. Because he's not like an active military guy. He's like a box mover. Moves things from one place to another. <laughs> He might help with like a hurricane or something like that, but anyway. So, <laughs> all joking aside, I am really happy for him. Uh, I love you guys. If you had fun, if you enjoyed this, if you stuck around all the way to the end, first, rock, first of all, Punk Rock Club, I love you the most. Also, check out our link for Rocky Mountain ATV MC in the description. Check out all the other, other sponsors link. Uh, ben Nicholson at First Rock Moto has some amazing stuff and great deals if you use our stuff. All the people who help us out, please check them out. They make a massive difference. I love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.